Welcome back everyone. Today we're here with Dr. Carter, President, CEO and Director of Cabral Gold. Alan, how are you doing today? I'm very well, Andrew. Thank you. So Cabral released some news this morning on a new target called the Medusa target with some high-grade gold surface samples. Can you walk us through this news release and the importance of the findings? Sure, Andrew. Um, this, uh, the news that we had out today um, indicates we've got a brand new target in the eastern part of the concession area. We've been picking up some very high-grade uh, material which is on surface uh, in an area we previously weren't aware about. And um, the two groups of samples that we've collected, which are 330 meters apart, are averaging, uh, both groups of samples are averaging well above 20 grams. In fact, some of the samples are, are up to 80 grams a ton. And this comes uh, less than a couple of months after we announced uh, uh, the, the identification of another target called uh, Alonzo, which is four kilometers to the, uh, to the west. And again, brand new, and the samples on surface there, uh, we collected, I think it was 24 samples, averaged over 90 grams a ton. And we've now got outcropping uh, vein mineralization with visible gold in it at Alonso. So this new target, Medusa, is, is pretty exciting. And it's got a very, very interesting uh, structural uh, location too. As you, as you know, most gold deposits are associated with major geological structures and faults. And this one sits within a, a massive regional fault structure, with, which continues at least 200 kilometers. Just so today's news release has some context, in case there are some new viewers watching who aren't familiar with Cabral, can you give us a quick overview on the company and your core asset? The project's located in the state of Pará in northern Brazil. Uh, Pará um, experienced an enormous gold rush, the largest gold rush in history anywhere. Um, was recorded, was started in 1978 and, and ran for uh, around about 15 years through to the early uh, 1990s. But uh, during that time, there was an estimated 30 million ounces was washed uh, of placer gold. That's alluvial gold that's been eroded into streams and rivers. Um, 30 million ounces was recovered during that time uh, by uh, almost a million small miners. And of the 100 or so areas where they were washing gold from the streams, this area that we own, Kuyu Kuyu, was the richest one. So um, we've been doing, we've been working there for some time. We already have drilled resources of a million ounces. Um, we think there's a massive upside to that million ounce resource because we've got eight other areas where we've done a limited amount of drilling where we've got some very compelling drill intercepts. Um, and then uh, we have underneath that eight, those eight areas which are out, all outside the resource where we've got some drilling, we've probably got another dozen or so targets. And this is another one, this new one, Medusa, that we announced today, where we've got some very good surface numbers, but we've got no drilling as yet. So it, it really is part of a district play, Andrew. There's something I'd like to uh, add on there. Uh, it sounds like you have a very target-rich environment, and you just picked up a new RC drill rig. Can you talk a little bit about that uh, acquisition? Uh, so far, the property, um, we've drilled 52,000 meters of diamond drilling, and, and we've just acquired a drill rig uh, that will allow us to drill uh, for about 10% of the cost of the diamond drilling that we've done so far. So in 2019, we drilled approximately 5,000 meters in two drill campaigns. Um, with this rig that we've just acquired, and we acquired it secondhand, uh, and it's currently undergoing some maintenance. Um, but we're, we anticipate that, you know, for the same sort of uh, money that we spent in 2019, we, instead of drilling 5,000 meters of, of, of core via diamond drilling, we could have drilled 50,000 meters of, of reverse circulation drilling. So it will, this is a district scale play, Andrew. As you said yourself, it's a target rich environment. And so in order to fully assess uh, just to, how much gold we have in the property and how many deposits we have here, because there's clearly multiple gold deposits here. Uh, we need a method that is both fast and uh, cheap. And uh, this RC drilling should allow us to, uh, to significantly increase the number of meters that we're drilling and, and test all these multiple targets that we've got. Excellent, thanks for that explanation between uh, diamond drilling and RC drilling. So investors and shareholders always want to know what's next. So. What additional results can shareholders and investors expect kind of in the near term here? There are a number of surface results still pending, Andrew. If you look at the map that we put out in the press release, the, the grayscale map has a number of stars on it where we still have uh, results pending. In fact, there is another area that we have no name to it yet that's approximately two kilometers to the north of the Medusa area um, where we've been picking up similar blocks uh, and the results are pending on that. So we expect to have those results back in the next uh, uh, few weeks. 
I think the real significance of today's releases is, is obviously the numbers are spectacular on surface. They're similar to Alonzo, but uh, the significance of this new target is that it sits right within this massive regional structure, uh, which is called the TZ structure. And we know that structure's perspective because El Dorado Gold has a, a gold deposit called Tocan Tanzinho that is over 2 million ounces in combined resources, about 20 kilometers to the southeast of us. And that gold deposit of theirs sits right within this regional feature. So, you know, as I said, we're at over a million ounces in two deposits. And we think there's tremendous upside to that. Um, we anticipate testing this new target at Matusa and Alonso and some of the other targets uh, later in the year. Uh, so we think, we think we're onto something pretty exciting here. Were there any other points uh, we missed or comments you'd like to make before we wrap things up today? Yeah, I think it's important for people to note here what the opportunity is uh, and, and uh, what the value add proposition is here. This company currently has just 61 million shares out. Uh, I, as the CEO, am the largest shareholder. I've so far invested $1.5 million of my own money into the company. So, you know, I, as an investor, uh, when I look at investing in companies like this, I like to know that management is aligned with shareholders. So, in this case, um, I've written some pretty big checks, so I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I truly believe that we've got something special here. We already have a million ounces defined, Andrew. The market cap of this company is about eight or nine million Canadian dollars as of today. So currently, the million ounces that we have drilled off in the ground is currently valued at eight to nine million dollars. Um, so when you look at the gold price, which jumped uh, $20 this morning, US, it's now uh, well over $1,700 an ounce. I think that that is a tremendous potential value proposition. And I certainly know that from the last um, boom in the gold price, there is this, as you're aware, there is this cascading uh, a cascade in terms of valuations that starts with a lift in the gold price and cascades down into the value of uh, the major gold mining companies like Barrick and Newmont, and then goes into the uh, mid-tier producers, uh, and then finally comes into the junior explorers like we're at, and you get most leverage from the junior explorers. And so during the last gold boom in, uh, in about 2011, 2010, companies like ours were being valued at 50 to 150 US dollars an ounce in the ground. And we're currently valued at eight to nine Canadians. So call it five, five to six US dollars an ounce in the ground. So I think there's a tremendous value add proposition here an opportunity in terms of an investment. Um, because at some point here in the next few months, the interest will cascade down from the majors through the mid tier companies and into the junior explorers. And I believe that there'll be some tremendous um, opportunities and some tremendous opportunities to actually uh, ultimately um, uh, you know, realize some, some enormous gains in, in the junior sector. Well, I think that's a good point to wrap it up here on. If viewers would like more information, you can visit the company's website at cabralgold.com or check them out on the TSX Venture Exchange under the trading symbol CBR. Thanks for watching and Alan, thanks for taking the time today. Thanks very much, Andy.